Hey everybody, it is Derek, AKA Mr. Shred with Masters of Shred, your number one source for all your daily spectacular content. We're here for another amazing episode of Talking Shred. We got a really special guest right here. He is the Whammy Bar Wizard, the Shrift Master Supreme. You've probably seen him inside Alice Cooper with Dawkin, even White Snake, but tonight you're gonna see him with Winger and they're gonna blow the roof off of the Arcada Theater inside St. Charles. Ladies and gentlemen, my fellow Shred enthusiasts, give it up for the mighty Red Beach. Hello. <laughs> was that the Thank you for giving it up for me. <laughs> was that the best introduction? That was a great, yeah. I wish, I wish there were people here. I know. Well, <laughs> we're, we're going to add some good claps in there, so they're all going to be there. Oh, Don't oh, worry about oh that. yeah, like. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay. Thank you for taking the time out. We are here at the Arcada. You're about to kill it with Winger. You're doing double duty, you're usually with White Snake, and you just mm. came back from overseas mm -hmm. doing. Red Beach and the Bad Boys. Oh yeah, that was fun. Right, which is killer. Yeah. So here you are regrouping. You got your guitar here. This thing is beautiful. I mean, we're gonna talk about this. So oh. don't you worry, we're gonna get into that. Because the first thing we wanna talk about is gear. Gear. Let's talk about this gear. So this is what you're bringing out tonight, right? This is your signature model, sir. It's not, it's it's not. It, it was, it was, <laughs> it came out in Dawkin. So in 96, I needed something cool and different. So I um, asked John, sir, to make me a Strat, and I said, and maybe put the mirror from the Voyager on there. And he did it, and he hated it. Um, <laughs> he did this just because he thought it looked cool, I guess. And uh, and so he hated this and only made one. He thought that it um, it was such a beautiful guitar that the mirror covered a lot of its you know, right. curly beautiness. So um, so he never made another one. But this thing stays in tune. It never goes out of tune. So that's why I bring this for Winger. Well, where did you get that idea to do the shape like that for the pickguard? I drew it on a napkin um, drinking on the plane for the Voyager. So it was just um, like that And then I handed one. it to Mace Bailey at Ibanez, and, and he uh, he cut it out. He we, we drank even more, and, and he, <laughs> he cut it. Work. And, yeah, he book matched a couple of big pieces of wood, and. and Cut it out right in front of me. Well, you know, so funny. That was from the Ibanez Voyager, right? Which is a pretty hard guitar to come by these yeah, days. Yeah. Which I, I tell you, the top three guitars from the '80s of, when it comes to shredding yeah. for me. PV oh, uh, PV Wolfgang. Sorry, yeah. PV Wolfgang. PV Vandenberg. PV Vandenberg. <laughs> Incredible. PV Wolfgang was really. That? You like those guitars? Oh my gosh, the necks are like butter. Oh, I've never played one. Oh, um, insane. Oh, and cool. The value's gone up like substantially, like in the past year, it seems on eBay. Mm. But that guitar, Kramer Night Swan. And that Voyager. Ibanez Voyager, shit. The feel of that neck, it's not like the super thin, it's comfortable, it's not too thick and mm. it's not too thin, it's just right. Speaking of that, mm. do you still have any of those anymore? Uh, yeah, I have uh, uh, one. What color is it? Um, brown, it's the wood. Koa! Yeah, it's Koa, it's well, the Koa model. That's the rarest one, man. You should yeah. be happy about that. And it was, uh, actually it's, it was a prototype and I never liked it. So no. it, it just sits in my attic, yeah. You got a lot of music videos with that guitar. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like so no, much. I sold all my guitars when Winger broke up. Yeah. I, mean, I sold a lot of guitars. So you, yeah, you also had that crazy um, Ibanez WRBM, right? That wild one. The that crazy does shape. like a hundred of them, right? Yeah. Made in Japan. Those are nice. And you signed the back of all of those, right? Mine were actually crappy, but the the Japan ones were really nice. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I remember if you go to your web to uh, your website, it says if you find one of these, because they're really hard to find, yeah. let me know. That's what it says on your website for that guitar. As my words? Um, like, is that me saying that? It seems like it came from you. It was on your well. It's on like this write up about you and goes through all your gear. It's like you find this guitar. It's very hard to find. Contact me. <laughs> oh, oh! It was probably the guy who wrote it. The guy who got yeah. it decided. Yeah, I was so, gonna say because okay. I found one. Yeah, you did, huh? I did. I just found one on eBay, which is hard to do. They never come up. I've been looking, but there is one there. However, is this with the winger graphic on it or is it red? No, it's red. Cool. The winger graphics a little hard to come by. They only made a hundred of them. So. Yeah. Yeah. This though, right here, may bring back some memories for What's more than that? one reason. Oh yeah. Oh well, look at that. So, you actually signed, signed by that me. in '99. Huh. It's so, a nice color, right? Yeah, I like the color a lot. So I actually picked that up from a guy named Kim who had you sign it in '99, and he's from Wisconsin. So groovy. I bought it. I've looked for that guitar forever. Killer axes. The whole feel. Everything, man. And the yeah. color is, this was what you had in an Easy Come, Easy Go video. The actual one? Well, no color. Yeah. That's close enough, right? I think, <laughs> I no, no, the one I had um, 
in the easy come, easy come, easy that, go, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Easy come, easy come video. <laughs> easy come, easy come. <laughs> That's uh, <laughs> It's curly maple. These are yellow. Um, it's, you know, it's a curly maple top. Pretty really? darn sure. Wait, no. Okay, wait. <laughs> I'm not sure if I use that one. Um, it's a lighter blue, the one. But you know what, though? The we'll light, call it up. We'll look at the it The light plays with this color. Big time, so it changes. I couldn't even capture this color on a on a photograph. So maybe I always thought it was a lighter blue, and I know it's that I, really nice I, aged turquoise kind of. Right? Okay, I'd love to see it. I again. hope it is. It's a great argument. <laughs> what have. is this, right? <laughs> yeah, Can this someone is help teal. us out with this. What color is this? Teal. Teal. It, I mean, it, but it isn't prism though, right? No, no, no. You Pr know prism. Prism's wicked. Prism was like your Kramer Pacer Deluxe, right? Kind of like it. Yeah. Flip flop, iridescent. I still have it. I play with uh, White Snake. You got that Kramer still? No, not the Kramer, no. You have a Sir. I have a Sir. That looks like that Kramer Pacer yeah, Deluxe does. did. Yeah. I saw you play that last year at uh, Hard Rock in Hollywood. I'm like, oh my gosh, I was just like his Kramer. Yeah. That's, it's that's a, awesome. It's a beautiful guitar. That's a wicked axe, dude. Thanks. Oh, I don't want to make you comfortable holding this for too long. It's going to bring back a lot of memories for so you. So you bought this? Yeah, I bought that. Yeah, it's, it's a, nice. It feels, dude, the, the, the tone is amazing. You know, this is broken, a little toggle, but I understand they break all the time on this. Did it ever break for you? I don't know. Um, I don't know that I even put those on. I would tell them to get rid of that. Also, I have no the, use for that. This is probably fitting then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, oh, that's good. It's very you authentic. Go. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Subbing that out that's there. That's great. Right? I love that guitar. One of my favorites. So going right into it about this. I already, got, I already showed you the side, Benez. So we already know how this guitar came about. You had some beers. You got the guitar. <laughs> we already talked about the, the latest, greatest three axes of shred. That's one of them right there. Well, you know, the great thing about that guitar is it doesn't need a guitar stand. It stands up on its own. Yeah. Just lean it against the wall. That's know? also because it can't fit on a guitar stand. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's a problem. Well, yeah, yeah that's the There's bad no part. stand that works for that guitar. Trust me. <laughs> no, it's no. always hanging on one end. Yeah, but it <laughs> looks cool, though. It's just hanging on a wall. I then just, you can do it. I ripped off Steinberger and just made it more so you did, right well then again i think everybody went for that look right kiesel with the um what is the guitar called vaders headless yeah. vaders that body is a yeah. steinberger mm -hmm. like vito's mm -hmm. and uh you know but, but that looks pretty damn good because the horns are really nice and long too I so you've like, got a lot of reach i wanted thing, them longer and they said no <laughs> yeah. they, they made my personal one longer yeah um and it snapped off like they said it would Oh, yeah. you're kidding. Yeah, that's why they didn't make them. Okay, I so wanted them really long. That was a bad call then. <laughs> but let's talk about something okay. technique-wise. Sure. Everybody knows you are possibly one of definitely the best tappers out there because it's hard. Many people will tap. Not many have a distinctive sound and tone to their tapping. You are like the, I would say, the perfect blend of a good brew of coffee with just enough cream to make it smooth. <laughs> you sound different than Evan Halen. You sound di different than Vito Brada and your tapping is on your own. So what's your technique? Because from what I understand, you skip a string, or you tap, you use this hand, you kind of like mute it a little bit before you go down, no, something like that? Uh, no. <laughs> you know what you, you, um, I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, it's uh, the thing that I do that's weird. Um, you know, I, I don't use my pinky very often when I play. People talked about that, yeah. Yeah, so um, what I do is, uh, to get to the next string, I usually go to the next note up in the scale. So it sounds like a legato saxophone run, just going, da -da 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 -da, you know, oh, yeah, without playing the same note twice. A lot of people, when they tap up, yeah. um, they'll hit the same note twice for some reason. Um, so I always like to go to the next note in the scale, but to get to that next note, I don't hammer with the first finger, because who hammers with their first finger? You know, right. that's not fun. Always you use the second, there's way more power. So. Um, Rather than hammering with my first finger, I pull it with the third finger of my right hand, like that. So, That's yeah. That's why it sounds so smooth and crazy. I, like I that, guess right? it, you know. That sounds amazing, man. That's, it's that's well, crazy. and then if you just like do a pentatonic scale, like with that, it sounds different than anything else, probably. Right. Um, and then you can just, you know, move the pentatonic scale around, you know? You know. I already know the first complaint of this seat, this whole segment is going to be, why the hell didn't you have them have an amplifier, man? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Buy an amp for production, you jerk. That's when I get that immediately. I, I have the greatest little amp that I bought. Is it, a lot of, is it the uh, Fly by Blackstar? Um, no. Good. Shh, Everybody says that, so tell me what you got. Uh, it's the newest thing that's taking... 
the world by storm. Am I, am I hinting sarcasm? <laughs> no, this thing is awesome. What is it? It's called a Nux. N-U-X. N-U-X. Yeah, and it's, it runs, I run it by my phone. It's got an app, and um, it's only this big, and it weighs nothing. Sounds great. Really? It's got three channels, um, and you can jam along with your laptop or with your iPhone. It's Bluetooth, so you can do it in headphones. You know, Dude, no it's, kidding. It's really, really great. Yeah. Shit. Okay, Nux, N-U-X. And it's $99. That's a good deal. Yeah. Do you not work for them or something? Like I know. That? I should, we really can just edit that out. Is that true? Okay. So it is true. '93 was a pretty big year for underrated albums. You had Saigon Kicks the Water. That album was insane. Very underrated. And you had Winger's incredible album called Pool, which was a four hundred thousand dollar budget. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was three, but probably oh. ended up being four. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We had Mike Shipley, and you know, it was a Big, beautiful studio and all that. I feel like things really got heavy with that album, right? Did you, did you guys go? Well, no, that's when we got or? away from Bo Hill. You know, oh, okay. um, we kind of we wanted to go our own way, and Bo was, uh, you know, he was all about the hits, which was great. You know, um, he just wanted us having a certain uh, chemistry uh, with, you know, hit songs you know <laughs> chemistry is not the right freaking word okay <laughs> well he got you and uh kip together though right he did he got us together yeah. but you know he wanted to hit 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 yeah. hit um and we wanted to do something you know more progressive and you did and, that and album heavier. was i mean yeah. junkyard dog that nasty heavy riff yeah, and no, and no one ever knows that's winger solo? i mean you play right? it for someone yeah, they don't like, know, that's like, winger well see <laughs> that brings me to my next point do you feel that Winger kind of got the short end of the stick compared to other bands in your genre of that time? I don't think you guys really got the respect or appreciation for the musicianship that you guys were pulling off. It was insane. I, 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 mean, I think that's why we got made fun of more than anybody else, um, is because we professed to be great musicians. And, you know, we, at, at the same time, we were looking lovingly at the camera. And you, you guys know, looked good, right? The hair right? and the whole thing. Like, and we're also great musicians. And then. You know, Beavis and Butt, yeah, Beavis and Butthead are like, you know, we're gonna I, hang I, this guy by his underwear. I gotta tell you, that kid should never been wearing a winger shirt. <laughs> I tell you, know, his you, parents were other shirt. bands, and his dog wore a winger. You're shirt. kidding, yeah. really? And they were all nerdy. <laughs> oh my god, that's, see that? That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Short end of the stick, but it, it didn't have been that way. But if it had been Poison on their t-shirts, it wouldn't have been as funny because Poison, they just have fun on stage. They, they don't say, "Oh, we're great musicians." You know, right. Nelson could have been on their shirt. <laughs> Nelson, yeah. Not nothing against you guys. I'm just well, saying, I love right? Nelson. They're great. They had actually had an amazing guitar player. Yeah, uh, they, yeah. They, they did absolutely. So let's go right into it then. Um, we talked about this, so. We, we actually covered a lot. I think we're almost basically ready to get your ass on stage, almost. So let's go right into this now. Yeah. Um, you have an upcoming instrumental record, seven years in the making. Yeah, how'd you know that? Wow. I've done a lot of research on you, my yeah. friend. Yeah, okay, cool. A lot. Yeah. Good research. So, yes, yeah, seven years, you've been working as a hobby, and Kit finally told you, get that thing out of your computer, let's get it out, a little yeah. jazzy, a little rock. What can we expect? It's um, It's definitely different. It's not like everyone else's instrumental guitar record for sure um, I just worked on it a little bit here and a little bit there for years you know um, and it all started when winger broke up I thought I was gonna be a jazz fusion guy you know and then um, I made some demos that are for sale on my website and actually you can just get them on iTunes um, and it went huge it sold more than even my uh, solo album. You know, people love this fusion demo thing. So, um, you know, uh, I wanted to actually make a record of that one day and Kip got me off my butt and uh, we got my favorite drummer to play on it and um, I just gotta get it out there. I'm just never home. <laughs> and then you get it out there, you should probably want to tour for it too. I mean, there's a there's this whole market for like this kind of guitar playing is coming back huge, I you hope know. So. And people want to see it. So you got all these young upcomers like Andy James, Andy uh, Angel Vivaldi, mm. and everyone's getting back into this shred surgence of. It's got rock sanity. stuff. It's got Black Magic on it. It's got Cutting Loose. Yeah, I heard you re-recorded that. I re-recorded this, right? them. Yeah, because those recordings are terrible. Okay. The sounding. Now, you've ever heard what the, what the uh, proper definition of a shrift is? I made that no. term up. Yeah, what is it's it? It's like a perfect riff, but with shred elements. It's not a riff. Riff, I think of Black Sabbath. Shrift, yeah. I think of you, 17. I think of that cutting loose. 
That I posted on the page. I go, guys, this is not the, like the most insane riff ever. It's, it's a, a good riff. riff. Cutting it's loose a is a good riff. It's so nasty when like you really get into it. You go all around. The, it sounds amazing. I put solos on it too, and it sounds a lot better. There's yeah. actually a solo guitar on it now. Wow. Over the dun. You know, Dude, that's it? that's nasty. That sounds so good. That's just see, that's not a rip. That's a shrift. Okay, hundred percent. So that actually is something that's still kind of in the works. Then you're still not. No, sure it's about done. The it's date. mastered. It's done. it's done. Okay, completely. Just done. not sure just about the release it. date. I don't have a date yet, but it'll probably be on Frontiers, and you know they're they're interested in it, and we just got to get the contract signed and sometime next out. year. Oh, for sure, early next year. It's it's done. Well, you know who's gonna promote the unholy hell out of it for you. Oh yeah? Well thanks. I hope you like it. Oh dude, you gotta be kidding me. I'll get all over the page and everything. <laughs> so let's just hop right into it. Ask Rev. You asked all the questions. There was 40 of them. We picked the top three. He's gonna give you the answer any way you like to do it. Let's just go for it, Okay, right? sure. Dave Davis at David Davis Quincy <laughs> Hill. I think I got that right. We'll put okay. the little thing here to fix that. Okay. Um, why don't you use your pinky on your friend hand while you're shredding? You've probably gotten that a lot. Uh, no, no one's ever asked me why I, I don't use it. Oh, they just say, hey, this guy uses pinky. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I mean, I don't think anyone really notices, but he did. Thank you for noticing that. It's cool. Um, yeah, it's just not as powerful as my other fingers. And when I, I taught myself how to play, um, and I didn't like this finger. This finger sucked. So I started tapping as a result. Well, that's okay. uh, yeah. well, well I, got, I got the idea of tapping. Um, from Van Halen, of course, because not from uh, any videos, but from the album. Because on the album, he's like this, you know? And I'm like, what's, doing what's he it? doing that? <laughs> it's amazing, he used to hide it before they got signed, right? He turned his back to the crowd. Really, really? As soon as that record deal came, I'm on the front oh album God. doing yeah. it. How do you like that? Oh my God. Hello, amazing. world, say hello. This is, this is gonna change everything, right? Yeah, it changed, so, changed my so that's world, why. for sure. Right, I think it's everybody's. Right? I have recordings of me before I knew how to tap. Really? For sure. I wasn't bad. I was pretty good. Yeah. You know, I, I think everybody has that moment when you're just learning to play guitar and you tap for the first time and it starts to sound a little bit like Van Halen and you're like, oh shit, that's I didn't, it. I didn't want you ever to had sound that moment? like that. Uh, but but I, when you very first tap for the first time, do you ever go, oh my gosh, that sounds so cool. That's a hammer on yeah, the Halen. Yeah, you, the very you first did time, right? You're like, ah, that one, that's how you That did. one from a And eruption. then you make it your own, right? Yeah. So I, it's kind of like, gotcha. Yeah, I, I was cool. Like oh, that's how he's different than doing anybody, it. dude. Yeah. Yeah, I had to. I want. I wanted to be different. I, and it's hard because he, he really, you know, squeezed a lot of life out of those hammer ons But yours is like night and day, totally your own. It sounds different than. Yeah. His. It and you know, the the guitar sound is even way different. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the EMGs are so much different than. You know, right. I had to change all my pickups to do Lynch in in Dawkins. <laughs> really? Yeah. So, yeah. So you, I had to put an eighty five in the bridge, right? Um. You mean and for, and not for Doc? Oh, my and yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, for that one, right? Okay, yeah. and then not for no. Doc, though. No, no. So no you go to Screaming Demon or I have no idea. It's like Demarzios, you know, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great answer by the way. Um, this one is from Sammy Juicola. That probably sounds really bad, but um, it's at Kramer Bucket 09. He says, "What is the one thing you know now that you wish you knew then when you started out as a guitarist?" What's well, the one thing I know now that yeah, I wish, wish I had known knew, then? Yeah, when you started out. Yeah. That I was good looking. I was really good looking and I didn't know it. Like I see pictures of me when I was a kid and I was freaking hot. <laughs> I had no idea, you know? So yeah. I would have had a lot, I would have had a lot more confidence. You, have, you sure. had a different hairstyle too. I did, yeah. It was, just a, it was just a perm, yeah. And then you went to straight. Yeah. Because perm kind of went out. It'll, maybe it'll come back in again. It was nice to wake up with nice hair. Right? <laughs> Not do anything to it. Yeah. I understand that. Which that was the case for me. Okay. I, maybe that wasn't... I mean, maybe he was looking for a guitar type answer and not about well, being good looking. That's a good answer. I mean, you got, in other words, take advantage of what you got. You know, you may yeah. not see it at first, but if you, if you have seen yeah. the beauty you had... Uh, I was hot. You know, but, like now. Yeah, and also, you know, the confidence. I wish I had had more confidence yeah. back then. Yeah. Okay. Great, great answer. This one from Timmy underscore Sostra. I'm not giving you a name because you don't have one on your Instagram. So we're going to go by Timmy on this one, man. Thank you for the question, though. It says, hi, Reb. Do you still have or play that Kramer Pacer Deluxe? We discussed. No. Yeah, we oh, discussed. Don't I don't have it. No, I don't have a Kramer. They're all gone. They're all gone. I sold like 15 guitars. Wow, shit. Yeah. You know what, dude? There was a weird period where like, you were putting music videos out playing all three guitars. You had your Sir, you had your Ibanez, you had your Kramer. I'm thinking, are any of these endorsers getting angry? He's just playing all these different guitars in one video? Kramer said <laughs> that I sold uh, so many guitars for them 
even after I joined Ibanez. Really? Um, yeah, because of that blue Kramer. They said everyone went out and bought a blue Kramer because I was on the cover of Guitar for the Practice. Yes! I know, I know the cover it. you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah, um, so Kramer really loved me, wow. and and they were good, you know. But Ibanez um, gave me a good deal. It's pretty interesting. Um, so many guitar companies, I don't know how they got my address, but they just started sending guitars to me, you know. <laughs> it's not and me, thing, me and the UPS guy were like friends. <laughs> hey, Rab, what do you got today? What what color is this one? You know? beer, <laughs> yeah. right? Open yeah. it up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I sent them all back. Really? Yeah, I did. I did. Wow, I no thought kidding. it was unfair to, you know. Who were some of the other brands that that people may not Everybody. know about? Washburn. BC um, Rich, probably? Maybe. That uh, time? I don't recall. It was a, so long ago. But they just kept, you know, showing up. You know, and, you know, Elko, you know, there'd be companies you, <laughs> you just never heard of. They just of. started overnight. Yeah. You got to get his guitar. His hands were made. <laughs> Zim are, Zam. Right? <laughs> Zim Oh, gosh, that's great. This guy says, this is uh, Bruni Sears, B-R-U-N-E-Y, S-E-A-R-E-S, at Bruni Sears. What are some big differences between being a guitar player in the 80s versus today? And I'm taking this a step further. I'm going to just go, do you think that more players are at an advantage today or a disadvantage with the music industry? Oh, come on. I mean, they're at, they're at a disadvantage. Um, I mean, when I put my record out, uh, no one's going to really buy it because they can just watch it on YouTube. And there's really no way to stop it. You can try, but it's like whack-a-mole, you know? Yeah. Um, um, and so that's too bad. And the, the whole Guitar Hero thing, I'm getting worried. I haven't seen a new band. I want a new Van Halen to come out, you know, with some hot kid who's doing something wicked on guitar with good songs. See, that's the problem. You get these amazing guitar players that go to um, GIT and Berkeley, Berkeley and yeah. all these places, and they come out and they're just badass guitar players. But... N they can't write a song and you know so then they're stuck they're going to reach that level right of the, the, the massive success that comes with being a guitar hero you you need the songs Lynch yeah Beach Van Halen <laughs> Brada it's a, right? sounds so sounds so weird to me when you put me with those names you know oh, you, you, <laughs> Beach true, and though. Lynch it's like Lynch Bet is completely Court, different yeah, yeah, those, Cotson uh, those guys are all shredders I don't you guys were all on the same myself. cover of that magazine Guitar World that's true in the 90s. that's true that's right that, that infamous issue R Rich, Richie and yeah. Paul Gilbert and um, just badasses man those guys yeah. I, I'm I have my one thing that I do, you know. But you do it cheating. well. And you're in White Snake, <laughs> and you're in Winger. I am. Come on, dude. Guitar hero, straight up. Well, so, thank you. we're gonna finish this off real quickly. What's the one guitar you wish you never sold? Definitely Blue Kramer. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, someone's uh, telling me Kramer needs to put his guitar out again yeah, and make a, like a uh, red beat signature model uh, uh, throwback to the, I that time. Shouldn't have sold that one. Um, and uh, there was a seven string, an Ibanez seven string that um, Mace Bailey redid all the electronics for me. Steve Vai gave it to me, and um, I was destitute. I, I was so broke. Um, I lived off of selling guitars for an entire year. Because oh, Winger went from selling a million records to selling 80,000 records on pull arguably our best record. Right. You know? Yeah. So it was really a bummer. It was the dark time. Yeah, um, but, but then I got Alice. And you got Alice Cooper, cool. right? Which yeah. brought all back to you. Yeah, Kip golfing. had to loan me five hundred bucks for the flight to uh, to fly out there. Right and about audition. that? No kidding. So 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 that money just like comes and it it goes. You guys oh. were all over MTV and everything, man. Well, we signed a crappy contract to begin with. So, what happened, yeah, right? yeah. So we didn't really see. You know, I was wondering why is Dawkins driving around in Ferraris? You know, <laughs> 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 like right. we, we sold as many records as them. Gee whiz. Let me ask you: Do you think people really even need a label anymore? With how easy it is to make music at home on your computer and distribute it on social media? Yeah, I mean, but I hear you. You need a good uh, publicist to really make it work. That's what I just heard yeah. last week. Uh, <laughs> I told him, you a publicist? Like, no. Like, well, these you'd are, be a these good publicist. publicist. You, you've got what it takes. You're a good salesman. I would buy anything from you. Thank you. I have a bag of coal in the back. I want to want to show it to you. <laughs> okay. You may have something there. Okay. Um, all right. How does how does Red Beach define shred? Um. Well, you know, shredding to me, I always think of the uh, Mike Varney guys. You know, who are just doing the amazing scales and, you know, Ingve uh, Malmsteen. And I always think of fast guitar playing shredding. It's not, um, that's what I think it means. 
Um, I prefer more like Steve Lukather, Andy Timmons, you know, guys that play with just total soul and then they just burn a shredding riff, not for a super long time, just for long enough to make your nips hard and then they go back to, you know, <laughs> playing the melody. Words, headed for a heartbreak, is that right? Headed for a heartbreak, you know, you know when I, I met Richie Sambora and I had no idea that he actually knew who I was, we were opening for Bon Jovi and he, he came up to me and he said, uh, you know, hey Reb! And I was like, whoa, Richie Sambora, you totally know my name. And he was like, man, you're the luckiest guitar player in rock. And I said, why am I the luckiest guitar player in rock, Richie Sambora? And he said, man, you got the longest solo on the radio. Have you heard my solos? <laughs> you know, and it's true. true it was the longest solo it was like, two solos it was two solos and the, the outro was just incredibly it was long so all the swells and it, you could you could feel like you the emotion you're playing with is like oh my gosh every time i see you play it live it's like dude some guy wrote up where i've written a comment i posted a video of you doing tapping what have you he goes no soul i go <clears throat> my man you better go listen to head for a heartbreak and then I go check your ass out of this page because you have no idea what you're talking about oh no and that's not the only song a lot of your songs, you just go at it, man. You really feel the energy when you're playing that stuff. Oh, thanks, man. And that solo is badass. I don't know if I like the beginning solo more or the end solo. And they're totally different. It's just like, wow, it's tough. It's. Um, I was trying to go for like a um, Alan Holdsworthy kind of a legato kind of thing, you know? Yeah, that's um, why I heard. It didn't end up being that, but... <laughs> That's where I started. Well, let's see here. 2020, you're going to be hitting the road with uh, White Snake with Europe. In yeah, the summer, right? Yeah, yeah, doing some shows with them. And I'm sure there'll be some other White Snake stuff. Possibly a solo album. Well, the solo album's got to come out soon. If you could tour that with any other shredder of your choice, who would it be? Man, Joe Satriani. Yeah. Satch. Yeah, totally. Satch. Yeah. Okay. So, Satch, if you're watching, let's get this set up quickly, okay? <laughs> Sooner than later. All right, so where can everybody follow you at? On Instagram, it's. Red Beach Official, right? <laughs> yeah. I, I, we're going to put it down yeah, here. Red Beach Official. Yeah. what it is. Okay? Yeah, yeah. So it's Red Beach Official. Um, obviously, Wingers can be on the road after this. Check them out. Check out Weissnick. Come to a town near you. Look out for a solo album. Thank you to the Arcata Theater for hosting this amazing show tonight. Follow me at Mr. Underscore Shred Underscore until I get Mr. Shred completely, which should be my name anyway. Anyway, um, and at Masters of Shred. And guys, why don't you check out the new Talking Shred merch? It's actually really freaking amazing like who wouldn't wear that come on hook us up check it out i think you'll like it thank you for watching subscribe to the channel and give it up more time for the mighty red beach thanks guys thanks a lot That's see it. you soon